They they had no clue. They had right. no clue. They were working with it from the number, sacred geometry sort of point of view, 8 by 8, 64. But right. they had no idea either about the I Ching, 64 hexagrams, or how that would work, 64 codons of, of DNA. There were 64 Enochian, um, uh, what do they call, titles. Right. 64 characters in the 21-letter titles. Very complex. And again, as you go deeper into the system, you find things like Penrose tiling sets, uh, which is a very complex mathematical idea that only came along within the last 40 years. Right. But here it is 400 years ago as a component in this larger system. A four-dimensional so, cube within a cube. Cube within a cube. And again, beyond that, uh, the whole idea of the 24-cell four-dimensional figure, which is this complex mega-geometry. Um, in which all other solids tend to nest, and that's in there too. It's like, okay, D, the smartest man on the planet in the 16th century and, and one of the best mathematicians, could poetically conceive of the idea of higher mathematical dimensions. Uh, we actually have. But he'd have, have to do that in his head. Yeah, he, he, and he could write about it, but he couldn't describe it mathematically, right? Right. So he, he could poetically describe it, he could describe it with sacred geometry. But he had the concept, and that may have been why the angels chose him. But beyond that, in the material that they receive so carefully, is this fantastic web of these higher dimensional geometries and connections to DNA. Again, so that if you say one word in Enochian, you set off these resonances that literally cause things to happen down in your DNA to alter it, to change it, to... To alter it, to change it, to perhaps bring it up to standard, you know, bring your DNA up to code. Right, right, right. And that's the larger part of what the angels seem to have been talking about. Um, they gave these great tables, right? And these great tables were said to be aligned a certain way towards certain stars. And in the 16th century, when the tables were received that alignment was about six degrees off. And now, well, guess what? That alignment is almost spot on with all four tables. So it's like the system with the tables is designed to come online now. The angels said as much. So why? Well, it turns out on these tables are these little squiggles, these little tornadoes. And they seem to act as filters, templates, so that the energy, say, coming from the sun, perhaps even from something like a Carrington event, could be processed through these filters and therefore actually be beneficial to humanity and to our evolution as opposed to very destructive. So it's curious that this higher intelligence, seemingly from the DNA, 400 years ago would so carefully dictate the system that seems to be effective now and that seems to be designed to preserve and help our DNA evolve through what could be a pretty bizarre cataclysmic moment. Right. And we can tr and you can track this back. The Enochian language, you can track back uh, through history. Um, to well, not uh, really. You, you, can, you can trace some roots... Mm -hmm. um, there, there are parts of it that seem to be Old Kingdom Egyptian, for instance. Right. Um, but it's not really an Ur language. Um, do you remember, like, the holodeck in, in Star Trek? Yes. Imagine that our yeah. world is just a very sophisticated holodeck. Okay? okay. And what is creating this hologramic reality is higher computer codes, like the Matrix. Okay. And... Imagine, for instance, that you could have a glimpse of the computer language that would operate those codes. Uh, okay, I get it. I, I thought you were going to tell me I was sleeping in a tube and had a bunch of things attached to my body, but no, no, no. I don't. You know, who knows? <laughs> go that far, but uh... <laughs> wake up, Neil. Um... Yeah, but it, it is a similar idea of okay, there is a higher coding. And that coding seems to be connected to our DNA, obviously. 
And um, that may be what we're calling Ophanic or Enochian. No. Okay, we're going to have to go for a quick break now. Sure. Uh, Sorry, I, I've been, I got wound up. You know, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. We're, we're very yeah, fluid here. But we're going to go for a quick break, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the other side. And we're back uh, talking with Vincent Bridges, uh, who's talking about the Enochian language, and John D. and Kelly, and all kinds of interesting things in history. Uh, just quickly, before we go any further and get caught up in talking again, uh, do you have a website that people can check out? And I know you have some books, and they are, are they available on your on your website? Um, well, the books uh, "Mystery of the Great Cross at Hinde" mm -hmm. is available through Amazon. Uh, my website is vincentbridges.com. That's easy. And to uh, goldenmean.info backslash ofanim. I am. Um, it is also a good source for uh, some of the Ophanic material. Okay. We will have we do have a, a book coming out this week called the Ophanic Revelation, coming out in English. Um, so if you check vincentbridges.com, we'll have a link there as soon as it's available. And uh, we do have a, an Italian version of the Ophanic Revelation uh, that came out about a year ago and has been doing quite well. Yeah, no doubt. We'll we'll put a link to that on. Uh, on your uh, on your profile in our past shows uh, in on our website www.spectrumradionetwork.com. So if people want to check there, they can get the link, or they can just go to vidsonbridges.com, which is easy to remember. Yeah, uh, and we'll we'll run it from there. Well, that's great. You got a new book coming out. That'll be amazing. I'm looking forward to reading that and checking it out. Okay. Everything we've covered now, uh, you know what I want to know? I want to know if people are still studying the language, the Ophanic language. Well, it's broken up into a couple of odd groups. Mm -hmm. uh, the magical people who go, ooh, it's really strange and weird things happen when you do this. And then there's the group of historians who are interested in D and the time period and the whole idea of Renaissance magic as an academic study. And then there's a, a very small group of people who have been taking it seriously as a computer language, computer model. And um, some of those folks, um, they're a spinoff from some of Dan Winter's uh, people and uh, 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 other sort of connections. But again, it's we have a small group of people um, in northern Italy and in Prague. And uh, we're actually working with the idea of creating this mm, shield, if you will, creating this, this space, uh, using the language uh, over the next year or so, before 2012, just in case. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a very fascinating experience. Um, just last fall, I was in Italy explaining some of this, and uh, the people got very excited. There was a couple of computer builders and programmers there, and they're going, you're talking about a quantum computer. This is a quantum computer from the 16th century. And I'm going, okay. If, if you, you say, say so. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, there's a, a, an enormous amount of depth to, uh, to this that, like I say, if you're looking for proof of higher intelligence, this is pretty high up on the scale. Pretty high up. Go ahead, Tom. You have a question. Is there still a lot of material that needs to be uh, uh, identified or you know, maybe hidden in there still? Most of the material is a lot more available now than it is when I started working with it a long time ago. Then you had to go to the British Museum and get microfilm and all sorts of stuff. Most of Dee's manuscripts are available on the British Museum websites and at other places. You can find lots of copies, uh, which that's a great benefit. There's still weird pieces of things left in odd um manuscripts and in odd boxes. Um, we just discovered uh, back about a year ago a box of completely unclassified, uncategorized documents in the Rosenberg archives in southern uh, Czech Republic. Uh, and they're all um, alchemical. They relate to Dee and Kelly. 
And we may actually have uh, in that collection and then in another collection of, of D manuscripts um, some authentic uh, signatures and letters from Shakespeare himself. Now, that's still open uh, because we haven't really uh, done all the research work yet. But, yeah, there, there's still things out there. There's still missing pieces that we would just dearly love to find. But most of it is available, and um, it, it's amazing how much there really is given. But do you think it – th- but, uh, but do you think all the information on there has been deciphered pretty much? Deciphered, no. Um Let's put it this way. We know enough of what came through the sessions. In other words, we have enough raw material to begin to flesh out the ideas. But the ideas are so complex, like I was saying with the quantum computer, that you could flesh them out for years in just an amazing variety of ways. And um, so, no, it hasn't been completely deciphered. But there's enough there to go, okay, This is some really intriguing stuff. And, again, that's mostly what's in the Ophanic Revelation is how some of this more complex geometry and connections to DNA actually work. Yeah, that is, in, that is interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned how it connects to uh, the Mayan uh, 2012 concept, um, the... Center of the galaxy. The center of the galaxy is connected here as well. Is that true? You, well, it seems that almost everybody, uh, Eastern and Western, and it's even the Mayans, although they were counting it slightly different and looking at different things, seem to agree that there was a very precise moment in time that was going to be problematic. Uh, Jesus' return or the birth of the Messiah. And that, of course, was when the winter solstice sunrise uh, lined up with the center of the galaxy although they didn't know that they saw it as when the winter solstice sunrise fell under the left foot of Ophiuchus or the serpent hole now that's the 13th sign of the galaxy 13th sign of the zodiac and it marks the center of the galaxy the left foot of Ophiuchus is standing on the center of the galaxy so when the sun is in that position it's the galactic alignment And of all the different signs of the zodiac, Ophiuchus is the only one that's had a very similar meaning throughout time and throughout cultures. It's always been the uh, one who brings order out of chaos, Marduk and Tiamat. Um, and again, in the Middle Ages, it was St. Michael and the dragon. Right. So, of course, it would have meant that, okay, this is the moment when something very special relating to revelations, etc., would be happening. So everybody's been sort of working around the same framework because it's something obvious in the sky, again, if you have the secret, if you have the the key. And um, so the different calendars, including the Mayans, are focusing on the same event, maybe for the same reasons, maybe for entirely different reasons, but the event is important enough in the long range of, of time uh, to be marked in this way. So, yes, that's part of what the angels were talking about, is when we have the tablets aligned so that you're in the flow of the galactic alignment, that's when they're supposed to come online. And again, whether that flow is connected to why we're having such weird solar weather and and the high probability that we're going to have something similar to a Carrington event over the next few years, Mm -hmm. uh, or whether it's all, you know, sort of related or, or just kind of coincidental, quote, quote. And the Enochian, uh, right, the Enochian information, it, it points to, and what does it say? Does it say that there's a specific, um, not event, but effect? No, no it, it, essentially, uh, the angels told Dee and Kelly not to do much of anything with all this stuff. And right. it was all dictated backwards, for one thing. It was all, went to great lengths to make sure that it didn't accidentally do something. And they were told that they couldn't do the whole system then, that they had to wait until a certain alignment of the tablets happened in the sky. And that alignment of the tablets in the sky indicates that it's the time period now. It's this galactic alignment.